The last time the reigning featherweight champion, Alexander Volkanovsky, appeared inside the octagon for a major match this year was when his beloved belt was on the line. He gave his all to keep the gold and leather strap from falling into the hands of the Korean zombie. He was successful, but what does he plan to do next? Keep watching for some of the predictions we have about what Volkanovsky will do next. So what's next for Volkanovsky? If you don't know, Volkanovsky wasn't originally supposed to face Cheng Sung Jung, or the Korean zombie, on the night of UFC 273 main card. His opponent instead was Max Holloway, whom he was supposed to fight for a third time. The fight was super awaited too, considering how the Australian and Holloway have had a long-standing rivalry. However, Holloway had to pull out at the last minute due to an injury, which left Volkanovski with no choice except to face the Korean zombie. Now that Chang Sung Jung is out of the way, the Max Holloway trilogy will finally be completed. The UFC already knows the significance of such a match in terms of pay-per-views, so it has arranged the huge fight for the upcoming UFC 276. The fans are already pretty stoked, and many have already started placing their bets for the 3rd of July, where there'll be one reigning featherweight champion coming out of the cage. Once the 33-year-old manages to get through Holloway, the next step will be laid out for him as well. You might know how Henry Cejudo has made his return to the UFC. Once his six-month USADA pool is finished, he'll be fighting major opponents at the UFC, probably by the end of this year. In this regard, Cejudo has expressed his interest in trying his luck in the featherweight division, and if he keeps his luck, he could very well be Volkanovski's next opponent. Opponent. But for the time being, let's look at the odds of his upcoming face-off. Who's likely to win at UFC 276? The upcoming and one of the most exciting UFC matches of the year will see Volkanovski go up against Holloway in an action-packed showdown. The Aussie has managed to win the previous two fights, so who's expected to win the next one? The experts are betting on Volkanovski as of now. The featherweight champion is definitely being favored over his American counterpart, owing to their respective performances in the last two fights. Betting websites currently show that Volkanovski is the negative 146 betting favorite, whereas Holloway is a little off at a plus 124 bottom dog. The odds started with Volkanovski closing at plus 165 and then negative 250 in the rematch. Then when the Holloway versus Volkanovski 3 was first scheduled, the 33-year-old came in at negative 150, but that fight was canceled. Now that it's on once again, the experts and better sediments haven't changed much and the two will be facing each other with the winner being favored once again. Now his performance at the recent Vegas 56. Though not a major fight, the recent UFC Vegas 56 still managed to pull in a huge crowd through the appearance by Alex Volkov that it put together. The former Australian fighting champion featherweight faced Jarzinho Rosenstruck to get a quick win and defend his belt in the main event. Engaging in a traditional stare-down right before the fight, Volkov had already made his mind about defeating and crushing Rosenstruck, and that's exactly what he did. It didn't take long for the Aussie to do what he came for. He had managed to make the Surinamese fighter surrender by TKO. The fight was so full of action and adrenaline that it made the fans more open to smaller events hosted by the UFC like this, and it's possible that these non-major events will attract more attention in the future as well. For now, we can't wait till Volkanovski proves that he's better than Holloway in every way at UFC 276. However, considering Holloway has had some time off to train and improve, it's possible that he'll be a tougher opponent for Volkov this time around. Now, what Volkov plans to do if he wins the match? It turns out that the fans aren't the only ones who think the upcoming fight will be huge for Volkanovski. The fighter thinks so himself. He said in a recent interview that he's positive about winning against Holloway a third time and was even confident enough to share his plans once he's done that. The 33-year-old apparently wants to move up a weight class after defeating Holloway. He'll be trying his luck for the lightweight division once the upcoming bout is done and dealt with. The Great has also said that he wants to put an end to his rivalry against Holloway before he moves up to the weight class. He said, that's why I talk about this first fight with Max being a big one. After this one, if I go and do my thing, it gives me the time to go and at least have a chance to go for that double champ status. That's what I want, so I'm going to do what I plan on doing, and then that's what I'm going to call for. Let's see if Volkov is successful with all of that, because if Holloway comes extra prepared, he might have to face extra embarrassment from all these statements he's been making. Now, in other UFC news, Nate Diaz wants to knock some sense into Jake Paul, but the UFC is his only obstacle. Diaz, who is currently 37 years old, has been inactive for over 12 months now. His UFC contract hasn't been making things all that exciting for him, which is probably why he's looking for excitement in the oddest of places, a match with Jake Paul. You might already know that the UFC has barred its players from fighting the YouTuber, which is exactly why Diaz wants to end his UFC contract altogether. He only has one bout left on the deal, and he'll soon be free to reject a new contract or renew it. The 37-year-old took to Twitter to ask the league to either release him or give him a fight in either the month of July or August. Then the American posted a video of Paul knocking out Tyrone Woodley, hinting at wanting to fight the amateur boxer himself. The YouTuber has 
similar sentiments and has called out Diaz before, saying that he'd love to fight the expert UFC fighter. It remains to be seen whether such a fight will actually end up taking place or not. Either way, it's an exciting prospect that will attract a lot of attention if it does happen. Next, could Charles Oliveira give Khabib a hard time? O'Malley thinks so. John O'Malley is one of bantamweight division's brightest prospects, and he thinks a bout between Oliveira and Khabib Nurmagomedov would be great. The former lightweight champion has a speckless record, and O'Malley thinks if another player could ever be a real threat to the legend, expect Charles Oliveira. He said that he thinks only Oliveira is capable of giving Khabib problems, and that no one else has or had the skills it takes to bring the Russian former champ down. Plus, he only thinks that Khabib stepped away out of Oliveira's fear, who could become a major issue if he had still been fighting for the UFC. Oliveira is legendary in every possible way except for his name. He submitted Gathji in a quarter of a second in his previous bout, but only didn't win the belt due to a weight issue. And now that his fourth for a belt is underway, he may finally be recognized for the champ that he is. And that's also why O'Malley is super interested in a fight between these two champs. Lastly, here are three reasons why UFC should switch to stoppage bonuses. If you notice the bonuses that the UFC announces every, you might have noticed that the promotion has awarded every fighter who won a stoppage victory with a performance of the night bonus. Many fans think that it's high time for this bonus to be made permanent. Firstly, it should take away the surprise factor from bonuses. As it operates currently, the UFC has no rules regarding who gets a bonus after each fight. It kind of comes down to whoever makes the president and other seniors go wow with excitement. So if this bonus is made permanent, this whole process will become less based on a whim and more fighters may be able to get their well-deserved bonuses. Secondly, permanent bonuses could be a great PR move for the UFC. Last year, it was announced that the promotion had made billions of dollars, out of which only 17.5% was given to the fighters. This appalled the fans, who looked at the much bigger figures of the NBA, NHL, and more. So having a permanent bonus may make the fans think that the fighters are valued by the promotion. And lastly, having permanent bonuses should be cheaper than outright increasing pay. This is because these bonuses are entirely conditional. That was it for today's video. What do you think about the upcoming Holloway vs. Volkov match? Let us know in the comments box below. And make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel where we post similar videos quite frequently. We'll see you in the next one.